Now, there comes a point in every game development's life where content creators, artists and designers, become very frustrated with the engineers on a project. You see, most novice engineers for game dev, when adding artwork and content into a game, will usually hard code the path references to assets, which means that if a designer or an artist wants to change that data, they have to go talk to an engineer first, which engineers usually have a backlog of 30 to 60 days worth of tasks, kind of slowing down the entire project. More experienced engineers know how to avoid this and actually move themselves towards a concept of data-driven design, a concept which allows non-engineers to effectively change the execution of the flow and the assets in the game without ever having to talk to an engineer. Basically, this works by providing some sort of simplistic data file outside of the game code, a text file, XML, JSON, something that the designers and the artists can quickly iterate on without having to talk to anybody in the pit. Case in point, Let's say a designer and an artist need to find the optimal animation time for some kick maneuver on a 2D fighting game. Well, it'd be great if they could actually sit at the desk and try different variations of art creation and timing without actually having to go talk to an engineer to change the frames that are referenced. Most games these days actually have a huge backbone of data-driven design. Of course, you end up in a very, very weird position, is that if you have too much data-driven design, you actually become a slave to it, in the sense that most of your code exists out of there. So changing small situations becomes very, very difficult. You actually have to bring an engineer back in. So walk that line very finely. You want to be just data-driven enough that it makes sense and everyone can get their job done, but not so much that it actually causes problems to your larger architecture.